Hello, everyone. Steve Lentz here with Discover Options. I'm here with James Hogan uh, with Option View. He's one of the consultants we have that uh, helps folks with the software, the Option View 7 software. And we're here to discuss modeling options with both Thinkorswim and Option View and generally to understand the differences between the two systems. Uh, James, you want to uh, introduce yourself and maybe uh, let's get right into it here. Yeah, absolutely. I've been getting a lot of questions about this, Steve, so I'm glad we're going to uh, be able to do some some modeling here. I'm going to share my desktop, and I have my uh, Thinkorswim as well as my option view. So here comes my desktop now. Okay. And first of all, I'm going to I'm going to uh, uh close and then, and uh we have uh my option view open here. First I'm going to I'm going to minimize this so I can uh show you uh, what I have going on in uh uh Edgar swim here. So I have a, a a a butterfly in the call and a butterfly in the puts here. Um shows the uh, uh positions here with these timelines here. And then basically what we're looking at is we're looking at this is the live. This is the, the these are the Greeks for our uh proposed positions down here, both these butterflies together. And uh this is just the uh Thinker Swim standard model here showing the delta of one twenty one. Now one of the topics that's been flying around a little bit on the web and elsewhere is 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 really when you have a lot of legs like this, the deltas are flying all over the place, and sometimes the deltas with Thinkorswim vary from the deltas in Option View. Correct? Correct. So uh, I'm going to pull up using uh, Option View, uh, and we're going to go back into my uh, position here, and. The exact same position uh, we have on here. The market's closed now. Um, it's almost 3:30 here in Chicago, and this is uh, using uh, this is with the Thinkorswim settings. Let me double check that. Uh, yep, we have a standard model. What option usually as and Steve and I want to talk about that a little bit is if we change it to the true delta. We go to volatility and we go to settings here, and this is. The way that Thinkorswim models uh, uses its a uh, volatility model. Yeah, let's make it. Mm -hmm. Let's just make it clear for folks that when mm -hmm. you showed your pin, and right now you guys can see. Look at look down there. You can see the delta is at minus one nineteen point six. You and then over in Thinkorswim it says minus one twenty one. Now that's extremely close when you have six legs going on here. All right. Just to make clear, when we dialed in, you had already changed option views default settings to reflect the thinker swims. That's correct. Yes. Uh, to do right. that I, no. I turned off the true delta and turned off our volatility model and changed it to the EI uh um, now, now default when you bring when you open up option view and if you to make no changes to it we will be on a variable model here. here. Further, we will be on, I'll go ahead and cl click out of here, and then go back to and look at the true delta. We're using a, a true delta calculation. This is option view's default. So go ahead and now click OK. You can now see that option view's delta is at minus 144.1. Quite different than the 121 over there in Thinkorswim. Now, why is that? That and so here's option view settings at 144. There's a, the other one is at the cost is at 121. Okay. Now what changes did we just make? We just changed the true delta from being standard like Thinkorswim over to being a true delta. Okay, now let's explore that. Go ahead and click OK. Okay. And this that October options. Point to the MIV le levels there. Do you see how you have a vertical skew going on here? The out-of-the-money calls have a lower volatility than the in-the-money calls. And likewise, down in the puts, the out-of-the-money puts have higher volatilities than the in-the-money puts. Now, that's called a vertical volatility skew. And by default, option view factors that in in determining deltas. So what you'll find then is when you factor in that skew, 
the delta numbers over on the right. An at-the-money delta for the call, greater than 50, and money put delta is more than 50. Now, why, you know, really, academically, isn't it always that any options have a delta of 50? Well, no, not really. Not when you factor in the vertical volatility skew that you see here. And that's why uh, you're going to see a difference at times depending on how many strikes you're dealing with. But OpView is factoring in that vertical skew in what we call a true delta. An option view uh, you know, gives us a, a more accurate delta that reflects the existence of that skew. Because we know that skew exists uh, in the indexes, it's that was existed for a long time, you know, decades now. So uh, it's a more accurate delta number. No, add there, James. Well, yeah, I also wanted to, to ask you about it. I know that I've seen some other people asking about this as well. Is as far as why wouldn't you use uh, a model down here uh, the uh, combining the put and call skews? Why is it better to have it turned off? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, with regard to the indexes or any stock that has several calculated MIVs, um, uh, uh, you want that turned off because you have enough MIV calcu MIVs calculated so that the calls can stand on their own and the puts can stand on their own. Now, look, there's a lot of stocks out there that are priced, you know, kind of low, you know, ten, twenty dollars, and they don't trade a lot of strikes. And so you're going to have MIVs all over the place amongst maybe three or four strikes there. So when you have them like in that kind of a scenario where you have a low price stock, thinly traded, um, you really need to average the call and the put skew so that your theoretical skew is more is is smoother and more accurate, more thickly accurate. Now, but when you have dozens calculated on the calls and the puts, you really don't need to combine them. You could let the calls stand apart from the puts, and that would really be a more accurate way to do it, would be to uh, make sure that that box is not combined uh, when you're dealing with indexes or high-priced stocks, anything where you have you know, several uh, calculated uh, MVs. That's perfect. Um, and then now let's go into the uh, volatility tab here. Settings and uh, the difference between the variable and the EIOIO. Sure, uh, the EIOIO basically says that we're going to assume each option have its same implied volatility the today, tomorrow, and indefinitely into the future. No matter how much the market goes up or down. The underlying asset goes up or down. Each option will have its same implied volatility level as far into the future as we need to go. Now, the variable model says, no, it is going to change. So let's go back to the matrix, and let me show you just that example of what you have here. Okay, notice that uh, the October calls that short 20 lot there at 45 that has an implied volatility level of 18.7. Now, we could see that if the market goes up, okay, and that option drifts further in the money, its implied volatility will rise. Okay, the in-the-money options have higher implied volatility levels than the at-the-money calls or the out-of-the-money calls. That implied volatility level will go up. up. Option use variable model factors that in. Now, the EIOIO, that says, that 18.7 is going to stay 18.7 for that 20 lot, no matter how much the market goes up or down. All right, and and and, and this is really more more accurate to what Thinkorswim does, and also many other brokers. But it's just a lot easier to program. Just to say, you know what, whatever the MIV is today, boom, yeah, that's what it'll be in the future. And uh, let's call it a day. We'll draw the nice, pretty graphs for everybody, and you know it's good enough. Uh, well, it's not good enough for option view. So I want to be more accurate, and so uh, uh, we're going to factor in that vertical skew. Uh, we're going to you know throw in, you know things as well. So there you go. Okay. 
Excellent. Uh, yeah, that's mostly what I what I wanted to cover here. I mean, that's uh, uh, awesome. Um, I think I've seen some some stuff out there where uh, people are trying to change different things around just to to try to get it as close as possible and not really knowing why or, or or how. So I think that's going to clear a lot of things up for people. Great. Yeah, I mean, if you want it to match thinkorswims, you're going to have to turn off some of the things that really make it more accurate. The delta going to an EIO as opposed to the variable model. Those are two things you could do to bring it more in line with what your thinkorswim is going to show you. We suggest, of course, that you keep it the way it is by the default true delta and the variable model. That will give you a more accurate look, and uh, uh, you know that would be our suggestion. Excellent. Perfect. Thanks so much, Steve. Uh, thanks a lot, James.